Let the glory of the Lord let it rise, rise come among us. Them. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise, rise among the praises of let our King. Let the praises of our King let it rise, rise among us. Let it rise, sing. Our King, of our King. let it rise, let rise come on now. Let the glory of the Lord 
Let it rise in the praises of our King. Let it rise in the praises of our King. Let it rise in the Praises of the our King. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise. rise Come among on, us. let the glory of the Lord let it rise. rise let the praises us. of our King. Let it rise. Come on, let it rise. Sing, oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, Of our king, let it rise. Come on now, let it rise. So we sing, oh, let it rise. Let the joy of the Lord say, Come on now, let it rise. Let the joy come on now, let it rise. Let the praises of, of our King let it rise. Come on now, we've got to let it rise. So we sing.
So we sing in oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. let it ride. Oh, oh. Yeah, let it ride. We sing, come on, we sing in oh, oh. Yeah, oh, oh. we sing in oh, oh. In our love and sympathy to Jermaine, Jermaine Rochelle, Edward Dow, and Michelle Price on the passing of their mother, Sister Shirley Dow. Arrangements are pending. Services are entrusted to Board Funeral Home. Chris Alfreda, Brian Ingrid Thomas, and Chelsea Yan Hobson on the passing of their father, Brother Elisha Thomas. Visitation is at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and the funeral service is 11 a.m. Friday, April 19th, 2024 at the Fifth Ward Church of Christ. Service is entrusted to Carl Barnes Funeral Home. The Springfield family on the loss of their loved one, Brother Theo Theotis M. Springfield, 
Viewing is 9.30 a.m. Funeral is 11 a.m. Saturday, April 20th at Belford Church of Christ. Annette Williams, Eric, Kevin, and Judith Johnson on the passing of their mother, Sister Annie Johnson, wife of the late minister, Brother Clarence, Tom Clarence Johnson. Graveside service is 10 a.m. Saturday, April 20th, 2024 at Brookside Memorial Cemetery. Roosevelt and Doris Hill on the past of his brother and her brother-in-law, Leo Hill. Visitation is 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Friday, April 26th at A. Wesley Board Funeral Home in, ooh, in Louisiana. Viewing is 11 a.m. Saturday, April 27th, 2024, followed by a funeral at 12 noon at Holy Family Catholic Church in Port, Port Allen, Louisiana. Shall we bow for a word of prayer? Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we are so grateful once again that you have blessed us all, allowed us this opportunity to assemble. And Father, we pray that as we study your word, help us to uh, listen attentively to uh, Brother Philip as he presents the lesson. Uh, help him to remember all those things that he has studied and may he deliver it in such a manner, dear Father, that all of us will get some, something from it, just become edified and uh, better Christians. Uh, Father, we ask you to just forgive us for anything that we've done, not in keeping with you, we'll strengthen us, make us better Christians, that we might be better examples for those who are still living uh, in darkness. And Father, we pray for those among our number who are sick, those, dear Father, who have lost loved ones, and we ask you to be that holy and righteous will, just touch them and heal those that are sick, and then look in upon those who are uh, dealing with the loss of loved ones. And Father, we ask a special blessing upon uh, my family in particular, uh, Brother McLean uh, lost uh, a brother uh, two weeks ago, and then again today, he lost another one. So we just ask you to be with the McLean family as they deal with this uh, very, very, uh, during this very difficult time. And Father, we just uh, thank you most of all for your son. Thank you for allowing him to give his life that all of us might have a right to eternal life. Continue to be with us always. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray and give thee thanks. Let us all say amen. amen. Good evening. Good evening. I think I have my Maybe it's not. Okay. All right. All right. We, we, we actually have a lot to cover today. I know I say that every week, but uh, we actually do this week. Um... Let me apologize to you up front because I'm going to probably do 87.6% of the talking. And I know you come to class and you want to talk and you want to participate, and that's great, and I really appreciate that. But we're going to need a lot of readers, uh, and, and uh, I want to get to the first half of the class, and then I'm going to need a lot of readers because we want to really get into the scripture on an earlier point. So if you don't mind me doing a lot of the talking today, I know you say, what's new? You always talk a lot, but, but I, hear you talk, I hear you thinking. But um, we, we, we're trying to wrap up tonight the part of jealousy, uh, the part of jealousy, and I want to, I want to kind of talk about it. One thing that we talked about, just to give you the definition of biblical jealousy, and then we're going to look at uh, some of the points. Uh, we said last week that love does not, we read, we are from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, and you, your Bible shall automatically go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verses 1 through 4. We, we, we are on verse 4 now, but uh, we talked about love. Love is, somebody read just verse 4, just verse 4, and I'll stop you where we need to stop you. Who's my reader? Who's, my, who's the mic run? Okay. So, you got a reader? Okay. Not everybody at once. Okay. <laughs> First Corinthians 13, verse 4. This yes. is the NIV. Yes, ma'am. Love is patient. Love is kind. Mm -hmm. It does not envy. Mm -hmm. It does not boast. You can stop there. Envy, jealousy, uh, to seriously desire to have or possess something, to be heated or to boil with envy, hatred, anger, to, co to covet, co to covet, covet, covet it. You know, you know what I mean. 
I was just testing you if you see it. In many cases, in many cases, there are at least three parties involved in jealousy and envious situations. There are three parties. They are the well, first party is the misunderstood. We're going to explain that. The misunderstood. Then we have the accomplice. We have the accomplice. Where does this come from? You'll see. Then we have the target. We have three different uh, personalities. We have the, the, the misunderstood, we have the accomplice, and then we have the target. Let's talk about the misunderstood. Anybody know what I mean when I say the misunderstood? Communication breakdown? Okay. Anybody else? Let me tell you what I mean. Let me tell you what I mean. The, the misunderstood uh, tends to be the, the main character. They are the person whose envy or jealousy of another person's things or accomplishments or relationships or success or positions or gifts or abilities. They are the person who, to them, that jealousy, that um, envy is to them a legitimate thing. It's legitimate. And their actions and their responses to a person and their behaviors towards that person is justifiable. Yes, I put somebody's tire on flat, but I had a good reason to do so. That's the misunderstood. The misunderstood, they are just misunderstood. When they, when they seem obsessed with the person who they are jealous of, you don't understand why they seem to be so obsessed with the person. That's the misunderstood. The misunderstood person is, you don't understand why they do what they do, no matter how crazy it may seem. To you, it's crazy to stay out all night in front of somebody's house to see who's coming to his or her house. To you, that's crazy. But to the person who's misunderstood, that makes sense. Am I on somebody's street? Huh? Now, it's never us. It's our friend. Okay? So we're not talking about us. We're holy. It's not us. The misunderstood, it's not personal with them. They're only trying to right a wrong. They only trying to right or wrong. The misunderstood person, they are really not jealous or envious. They just have some concerns. You know, they're not, they're not jealous because you got a promotion. They just have a concern. Why are you? And not, why, not them. Am I making sense? The, 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 the misunderstood, they are tired of being overlooked and not valued and being to made to feel unimportant anymore. And, and that's how they see it. They see that, you know what, it's not that I'm jealous of that person. It's just I feel like that I am being overlooked. I'm not valued. We're going somewhere, I promise you. And then, lastly, the misunderstood person can be very, because see, sometimes we think that the misunderstood person, or the person who's jealous, is that person who is a loser. OK. That person who probably is not the best person. But sometimes the person who's the jealous person, who is the misunderstood, they are very accomplished. They are very successful in many areas of their lives. They are not bad looking or unattractive. Not all jealous folks are ugly. Amen, jealous folks? Ooh, okay, that would change my first amen. Or... You know, some are very attractive. They are very well known and liked among their peers, among the group of people they hang with. The misunderstood, they, they can be very religious. They're not all sinners. 
I mean, they're not in here because we are saints, but they're not all sinners. They can be very active in the church. A jealous person, can they not be active in the church? Okay, let me try that question again. Can jealous folks be active in the church? Because you seem like that was a trick question. I mean, some jealous folks hold titles. Some look to as being very important in the church. So not all persons who are jealous or misunderstood are bad people. Then we have the accomplice. What do I mean by the accomplice? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Hold on, you got it. Well, I think the accomplice is the person who upholds them in what they're doing and know that they're wrong. Hmm. 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 Okay. The enabler? Okay. You said the enabler? It's much, much like a murder. Mm -hmm. You got somebody who will hold the gun while you bind up his head or whatever. And, and <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the wrong lesson. I think we, yeah, we, yeah, well, yeah, he was yeah. I mean, she made it graphic. The man. No, I, I, agree, I agree with you. I'm messing with you, sis. I'm messing with you. Okay. Even a brother with the mic said, oh, Lord, okay. No. No, you, you, you make a good point. Anybody else? The accomplice. I said there are three aspects, the three parties involved. The misunderstood, we talked about the misunderstood. The person who says, look, you don't understand why I do what I do. I have a good reason. Then we have the accomplice. The accomplice and the sister is where, where I want to go. They are the sidekick of the misunderstood. They can be equally as dangerous as the misunderstood. They are the sidekick. See, they are usually the instigator. What do I mean? How does a accomplice instigate jealousy? Hmm? What well, Sheila said when she was an accomplice, she would say, I will drive you over there. There's always one unholy in the audience. But is she telling the truth? Just the sister said yes. They, they are, they are, they realize the problem of jealousy that the misunderstood has, and instead of defusing it, they egg it on. They will hold her shoes, earrings, her purse, instead of saying no. Girl, do you want me to film this for Instagram? They didn't light the fire. They just bought the matches. Hmm? They just as guilty. They know who they're dealing with. They know their friends. He knows his friends. They justify the jealousy, the jealous person's actions. I know why you did what you did, and I can understand it. They are the person that knows that person who is jealous, who is envious, is very emotional. They know their friend is very vengeful, is very vulnerable. Not thinking, but they take, a they take advantage of the person and the situation. Am I, am I making sense? They, they act like a friend when they are just there for the show. That's the accomplice. We're going to see this in Scripture. Then we have the target. Who's the target? What's the target? Hmm? The target is that person who deserves it. 
Huh? You, 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 you thinking about it. The target is many times through no fault of their own find themselves in the crosshairs of a jealous person. And because they have God-given talents and they have gifts and they have ability and they have ambitions, that person finds themselves having to do certain things. They are in the crosshairs of a jealous person. So what does the target has to do? Huh? Carry a gun, what you say? Just packed, that's it. They find themselves, well, come on, talk to me. This is the 13% of the, you can, uh, no. What, what do you do if you find yourself a target? What do we usually do? You fight back? How so? With scriptures? Oh, he said no quickly. <laughs> a wrong person. But the person who's a target, what they find themselves is having to do, they're having to tone down or limit their gifts and their abilities and their talents just to make you feel comfortable around them. Huh? Nobody has ever done that? You got to downplay your promotion because the person who is jealous of you in the office, you're afraid of. You don't want to start no mess. You're a member of the church. Uh, you, 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 you feel guilty for and about your success. I got a promotion, girl, but uh, 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 yeah, I, yeah, I don't know why they didn't give it to somebody else, but uh, I appreciate them giving it to me. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I got it, but I don't know. Uh, maybe, uh, you know what I'm saying? You have to downplay your success. They spend a lot of time, they spend a lot of time reassuring the image person that they are no threat to them. Huh? That's never happened. You spend all your time trying to tell a person who's jealous, I'm really not a threat to you. You spend your time telling the ex-girlfriend, the ex-boyfriend, I'm not trying to, you know, get in your business. I'm not trying to, I'm just coming to see my son. I'm just coming to see my daughter. Hmm? Okay, I just made that up. Okay. They sometimes feel that under so much pressure because of the jealous person that sometimes they quit their jobs. Hmm? I can't take this no more. It's not worth it. Sometimes what they do, they leave the church. Because you made it so unbearable for them. Sometimes what they do is they go into a depression state. They're depressed. They don't even want to go to work and they're the manager. And sometimes they, they take their own lives. Hmm. I can't take this no more. Because you made their lives, you and your accomplice have made your lives so terrible, they don't want to live anymore. Am I just making this up? So where does the envious and jealous, jealousy come from? Where does that come from? Anybody? Hmm? Insecurity? Let me take the one answer you're going to say first. Uh, not first, but one of the answers. Satan. You're going to say Satan, right? Okay, so I took that answer. What else? What else? Insecurities. People compare their weaknesses to someone else's strength. Hmm. How so, sis? Hold on, he's coming for my thanks, Joe. Hold on, he, he got... Well, uh, people compare their weaknesses to another person's strength. Mm -hmm. Whatever I'm good at, they may not be. Mm -hmm. But whatever they're good at, maybe I'm not. Hmm. And instead of focusing on what gifts God gave them, they're looking across the aisle. But we ain't thinking about that when we are the misunderstood. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got what you're saying. And that sounds holy. 
And that is right what you're saying. But, hmm, that's not how we feel. Sometimes this comes from a learned behavior. Where do we learn this from? Hmm? What do I mean when I say learned behavior? Uh, well, going up, bring the mic to Sister Gwen because she is quiet. I mean, she is. I said for us to hush today. Yes, ma'am, I did. I did. She's very obedient. That's good. No, go ahead, sis. No, I just said growing up in wherever your environment was that you grew up in, you can be learned from, you know, one or more persons that practice that. Give me an example. Um, if you overheard um, conversation with adults, mm -hmm. aunties in a room talking mm -hmm. about somebody that mm -hmm. they really didn't mm -hmm. have any reason not to like and you perceive it as jealousy, but you learned that behavior, so that's what you mm -hmm. grew up with, talking mm -hmm. about people that had things that you didn't have or mm -hmm. um, just picked people apart for no, no good reason just because that's mm -hmm. what you learned that people did based on how you grew up. Excellent point. Go ahead, sis. Now, scripture says it's the rottenness in the bone. Mm, mm. See, but I, I learned to touch the hood of the car when I get home from my daddy. Yeah, yeah, you never. I learned to check the mileage of her car from my uncle. My, my mama said, when he sits a certain way, he's just got to cheating. I just made that up. Okay, I, I just made that up. So you're going to go home and see how he's going to sit. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. But that's not right. He's right, he's right, he's right. Yeah, I got that. I'm going to watch Kim, watch how I sit. Sometimes it's a learned behavior. Sometimes it's encouraged by other folk. Girl, you should be jealous. You should be uncomfortable. Man, you're right. I would be jealous too. She's not respecting you. Look how she's talking to him and she ain't talking to you that way. Do we not? Huh? Sometimes, sometimes it's insecurity. It's insecure as the other person. You're insecure. Let's just face it. You're insecure. Sister Calhoun said that earlier. You're insecure. And you bring all your insecurities into your relationships, into your workplace, and to everywhere else. Sometimes you're arrogant. How is a jealous person arrogant? How so? Hmm? They're boastful? Okay. Anybody else? Puffed up? Yes, ma'am. It's my way of the highway? Okay. And, and then sometimes they are territorial. Who told you you could talk to my... Huh? They're territorial. This is my ministry. We're going to come back to that. Uh, okay. Now let's see all of this that we've been talking about biblically. Okay, you ready? Guys, we're going to work it because I need some readers for each text. Okay? So let's, where can we go? Let's go to, and we're going to see before we get there, the misunderstood, the accomplice, and the target. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 9. We're going to walk through this. 1 Samuel chapter 9, I'll wait for you, verse 1, 1 to 2 only. Who's my reader? And I need you to read as loud as you can. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. I uh, promise you I won't stop you. Hold on, sir. I want to make sure everybody get there. Thank you, sis. Hold on one second. I hear some pages, and that's fine. We're not in a hurry. we got at least two hours. Why does she laugh so loudly? The accomplice. 
Maybe she laughed because she said, you'll be the only one in here, but okay. All right. Who's a, who's a reader? Sister Kat. Okay. First Samuel chapter 9, verse 1. Mm -hmm. There was a Benjamite, a man of standing, mm -hmm. whose name was Kish, son of Abiel, the son of Zeror. You see why we're glad she went first on this? That's she taking all the hard words out the way, so we don't have any more. Go ahead. The son of Becherath, the son of Abiah of Benjamin. Kish had a son named Saul, as handsome a young man as he could be found anywhere in Israel. And he was a head taller than anyone else. Thank you, sis. So we got Saul. We introduced to Saul. He's from a good family. Saul is handsome. Saul is young. He's tall. He's taller than everybody. He's perfect. Saul is the man. If somebody told you, girl, I got a guy, he's of a good family, he's handsome, he's young, he's tall, what would you say? Where is he? And some of you are married saying that, where is he? <laughs> Next week, we're talking about, no. Hmm? Oh, I was just talking about for my daughter, not for me. Okay, let's go to... Chapter 9, well, chapter 9 and 10, because i got to skip to, it's a whole lot i got to skip to. Later on, in chapters 9, 10, and 11, Saul becomes a king. Saul is also a warrior. He's a king, he's a warrior. Chapter 13, Saul begins to do his own thing. He starts disobeying God's orders. Chapter 15, Saul was sent on a mission, but he didn't do what he was told to do. This tall, handsome, perfect person who's a king and a warrior did not do what God wanted him to do. Let's get some new readers. Let's go to chapter 15, verses 10 and 11 only. Chapter 15, 10 and 11 only. Who's my reader? We're going to need a lot of readers, so please. And I'm telling you, there's no other big words in this, I promise you. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king, because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry, and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Verses, get a new reader, same chapter, verses 24 and 25. Okay, got a sister. Okay, she got a trolling. She got one. Sorry. Okay. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the men, and so I gave in to them. Now I beg you, forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. Okay, let's get chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Let's get a new reader for that. Chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Chapter 16. We're going to wait on you. Go ahead. Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul, since I rejected him from being king over Israel? Samuel had a problem. You want to get rid of Saul? Saul is the man. But God says what? I mean, um. Samuel says what? I mean, God says what in that verse? Sorry, read that verse again, please. Now the Lord said to Samuel, mm. how long will you grieve over Saul hmm. since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have selected a king for myself among his sons. There's going to be another king that's going to take Saul's place. Now, let's get a new reader. Thank you, brother. Chapter 16, verses 10 through 13. We're going somewhere. Who's my reader? Did we run out of readers? Lord, send us a reader. I'll get you next. I mean, how do we replace, hold on. How do we replace 
a man like this, how do we replace him? Go ahead, sis. 10 through 13 in IV. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. Mm. But Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. Mm. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is ten in the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome figures. Then the Lord said, features, handsome features. The figures, okay, thank you, sister, clean that up. <laughs> then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. Hmm. So, Go ahead. So Samuel took the horn of all and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Roma. You got Saul. Good family, handsome, young, tall. He's perfect. Now you got another person who's going to be king. And he is tall. No, he's not tall. He's dark. He's handsome. And the scripture said his eyes are beautiful. He had pretty eyes. He, he, he's handsome. So you got a handsome king already. Now you got another king coming. And he's handsome. First Samuel chapter 16, verses 14. My sister was over here. Okay, who's going to read it? Okay, then we get you from right here, right here. Chapter 16, same chapter, 14 through 18, my sister. All right, this is ESV. Yes, ma'am. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, mm -hmm. and a harmful spirit. Okay, from now, the now that's, this is an important part, so I want you to slow it down for okay. us. We got it, we got time. Go ahead. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, mm -hmm. and a harmful spirit from the Lord tormented him. Mm. And Saul's servant said to him, Behold now. A harmful spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful in playing the lyre. Very important. Keep going, sis. And when the harmful spirit from God is upon you, he will play it, and you will be well. So Saul said to his servants, Provide for me a man who can play well and bring him to me. <clears throat> One of the young men answered, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing, a man of valor. Who are they talking about? David. Keep going. Okay. A man of war, prudent in speech, and a man of good presence. And the Lord is with him. You got all the way to verse 18? That's 18. Saul, we got a man. Who is David? David is from a good family, Saul. David is talented. He is brave. He's a warrior. He speaks well. He's good looking. He's a godly man, Saul. This is David. He's all of this. Saul. He's you and, and he's then some. He's you 2.0. Because it never says Saul speaks well. It doesn't say some things that about Saul that it says about David. It doesn't talk about Saul's talent. So let's get a new reader. Thank you, sis. Verses 19 through 20. Lord, have you just sent us one reader? There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Here, we got to read after, right well, here. Verses 19 and 20. Then I'm going to need a reader for 21 and 23 uh, after that. 21 and 23. Go Therefore ahead. Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with the sheep. And Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, mm -hmm. a skin of wine. Read it a little louder for me, my sister. 
loaded with bread, mm-hmm. a skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them by his son David to Saul. Thank you. Verse 21 through 23, I got to read it here. Thank you, sis. And David came to Saul mm-hmm. and stood before him, mm-hmm. and he loved him greatly. First time meeting Saul, he, Saul did what? Go ahead. And he loved him greatly. Saul liked, liked him. Go ahead. And he became his armor bearer. Not only I like you, I'm going to hire you. What else? And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. I like him. I like him. This is great. You got in the room two handsome, talented warriors in the room. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, this is the first biblical bromance. Nobody caught that. <laughs> Sometimes you are so holy. It's like, oh, Lord, oh, Lord should we laugh at that? Or, oh. <sighs> what could possibly go wrong? Chapter 17, let's get a reader. Chapter 17, know. let's Did get you? a reader, verses 4 through 10. Did you want me to do 23? Yes, ma'am. I thought you. Yes, ma'am. Please. I'm sorry. I thought you were okay. through. I'm and sorry. it came to pass mm-hmm. when the evil spirit from God was upon. Yes, Saul. that's an important part. Yes, go ahead. And the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, mm-hmm. that David took an harp and played with his hand. Mm. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. The Lord sent the evil spirit to Saul. David placed this instrument, and it calmed Saul down. Mm -hmm. Chapter 17, verses 4 through 10. Who's my reader? 4 through 10. Chapter 17, 4 through 10. Who's my reader? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The Philistines had a champion fighter from Goth named Goliath. He was about nine feet, four inches tall. He came out of the Philistine camp with a bronze helmet on his head and a coat of bronze armor that weighed about 125 pounds. Big dude. He wore bronze protectors on his legs, and he had a bronze spear on his back. The wooden part of his larger spear was like a weaver's rod and its blade weighed about 15 pounds. The officer who carried his shield walked in front of him. You would all the way to verse 10? Okay. Goliath stood and shouted to the Israelite soldiers, Why have you taken positions for battle? I am a Philistine, and you are Saul's servants. Choose a man and send him to fight me. If he can fight and kill me, we will be your servants. But if I kill him, you will be our servants. Hmm. Then he said, today I stand and dare the army of Israel. Send one of your men to fight me. Do verse 16 while you're at me. Verse 16? Yes, ma'am. For 40 days, the Philistine came out every morning and evening and stood before the Israelite army. Thank you. Somebody, verse, same chapter, verse 25 and 26, please. 25 and 26. Who's my reader? 25 and 26. Uh, uh, okay, go ahead. Okay, verse 25. Uh-huh. Now the Israelites had been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king... The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. David asked the man standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy 
the armies of the living God. Hmm. Let's get it. Thank you. You, you, you did. A, let's get a new reading for 32 through 37. 32 through 37. 30, there you go. Thank you, sis. David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail on account of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Then Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are but a youth, while he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant was tending his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went out after him and attacked him and rescued it from his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I seized him from his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, since he has taunted the armies of the living God. Hmm. Drop down to 55, says uh, Sister Raul, 55 through 58, please. Same chapter. Okay. Now, when Saul saw David going against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this young man, and Abner hold on, 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 stop there. Where did we read? Is this the first time Saul met David? Read that again. Now, when Saul saw David going out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this young man? Did we read somewhere where he says, send Jesse, send your son? So why does he say in this case, who is that man? Anybody? Is somebody with bravery? Okay. He saw him in a different light. See, it didn't matter who he was, what he was playing, because, but now I take notice because he's, he's doing something that I was afraid to do. Keep reading, sis. And Abner said, by your life, O king, I do not know. Hmm. The king said, you inquire whose son the youth is. So when David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the Philistine's head in his hand. Saul said to him, whose son are you, young man? And David answered, I am the son of your servant, Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Thank you. Chapter 19. Let's get a new reader. Verse 5. Chapter 19, verse 5. For he took his life in his hand and struck the Philistine. And the Lord brought about a great victory for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why then would you sin, <clears throat> sin against innocent blood by putting David to death? Y'all are you at chapter 19? Yeah. Maybe I want chapter 18 <laughs> in verse 5. I know. Do you want me to read NIV? Does it help? Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I hope I didn't give you the wrong chapter. Chapter 18. Try that. Okay. Verse number five. Five. All right. Whatever mission Saul sent That's him. That's the one I want. Go okay. Ahead. Whatever whatever mission Saul sent him on, mm -hmm. David was so successful that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. Mm -hmm. This pleased all the troops and Saul's officers as well. When the men were returning home after David had killed Hold on, the stop there. I just want verse 5. You, you did verse 5? Yep. Okay, just hold the mic. Now we got the misunderstood, the accomplice, and the target. In the next few verses, we will see all three play out. Verse 6, Hamilton. Verse 6 and 7. When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, mm -hmm. the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing. The women comes out. Huh? 
I'm going to let that simmer. The women came out, and what happened, Hamilton? <laughs> Don't try to be quiet when you read because your wife sitting on the side of you. <laughs> yeah, I definitely be quiet. You. Go ahead. Okay. When the men were, t- were returning home after David had mm-hmm. killed the Philistine, the women came out from all the towns of Israel to mm. meet King Saul with singing and dancing, mm. with joyful songs and with timbrels and lyres. As they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands, tens of thousands. I want you to stop at verse 7. That was it. That's it. Okay. Which role are the women playing? The motivator. All this, and that meant nothing. You women going to stick together, even the biblical women. Hey, uh, that's the motivator. You know, they were, uh, they were part of the choir. Uh, uh, they, uh, what is it, brother? Read that verse again. Give you bad. These women will stick together. Read that verse again. As they danced, uh huh, they sang. Uh huh. Saul has slain his thousands. Saul has slain his a lot of people, and David has slain a lot of people. No, and David, his tens of thousands. Now you are Saul. Okay, let me say this. Let me say this. <laughs> You with your husband. He says, baby, that dress looked really good on you. But the dress on that sister, the same dress? What are you going to say? Well, that's just his yeah. opinion. That's just his. See, see how the room changed. Now. After you slap him. <laughs> ooh, we got hip- we talk about hypocrites next week. Lord have mercy. One of the biggest tools that the accomplished use is comparison. Huh? David killed, Saul, you killed a thousand. Saul's happy. But David did 10,000. I mean, you look good, but my ex-boyfriend, he is a... <laughs> I mean, baby, you're pretty and everything, but the girl I used to date before I met you? <laughs> Does that make sense now? <laughs> Verses 8 and 9, somebody. I want to see what Rose Saul plays. Somebody. Verses 89, let's get a new reader. Thank you, Ham. Let's get a new reader. Oh, this is a messy class, Lord. Oh, mercy. Give me a <laughs> next quarter. Please give me a better class. No. Eight and nine. Verses eight. Yes, sir. Then Saul became very angry, for this saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed to David's 10,000, but to me they have ascribed thousands. Hmm. Now what more can we have but the kingdom? Saul looked at David with suspicion from that day on. Hmm. What role is Saul playing? Look, I, you, ought to, you gotta understand, they gave him 10,000. And I've been ruling longer than he could ever rule. The things that affect the misunderstood is other people's opinion about them. What you think about them affects the misunderstood. Another thing is there's a fear that comes over a person who's jealous and it feels that like they're misunderstood. 
There's a fear of power, of losing power, of losing influence. It's losing positions, respect, being challenged or taken away from them. They can't stand that. What did Saul say when he heard that? What else he going to do? There's a reaction to things happening around them and to them. What do you mean? But in the eyes, it's never their fault. They are forced to act to behave this way. And I need a reader. When I get to this next chapter, this next verse, that the misunderstood feel they don't respect my position here in the church. They don't respect me. They respect him, but they don't respect me. They don't appreciate my talents or my worth. I'm jealous of this person because they don't appreciate what I've done. You know what else they don't do? They don't understand I was here at this church before they came. I mean, I was here before they were here. And this mindset, I'm going to shock you with this, is mostly in members of the church who's supposed to be spiritually mature. That ain't how new converts think. That's how we think. We think like this. We think like this. You rarely see new converts act in this way. Mm. That's us. That's the us's. Sometimes, I'm going to get to another verse, but sometimes it's jealousy, it's envious among brothers and sisters. It's us who act like that, brothers and sisters in Christ. It, it's it's the, the ministry leaders who are jealous sometimes. Okay. It, it's sometimes it's the program the director. Sometimes the jealousy comes from the Bible school teacher. I'm jealous of him. I'm jealous of her. It, it, sometimes it comes from an elder. Sometimes it comes from a deacon. Sometimes it comes from the ministers. And sometimes it comes from other churches being jealous of each other. Y'all go to there in Mississippi. Y'all think y'all better than us. You ain't never heard of that? Y'all all think y'all special. Sometimes it comes from soul leaders who compete with each other. Huh? Sometimes it's from me, sometimes it's from you. And lastly, I need a reader. Same chapter that he just came out of. Uh, I think it was 18, verses 10 and 12. Verses 10 and 12. Go ahead, sis. The next day. Read a little louder, sis. The next day. Yes, ma'am. An evil spirit. From God rushed upon Saul. Okay, hold on. You, you rushing through. That's an important part of this lesson. An evil spirit, like normal, did what, sis? From God mm -hmm. rushed upon Saul. Mm -hmm. And he prophesied in his house. Mm -hmm. David was playing the harp as he Why was David playing the harp? As he usually did. Thank you. That's what, it, why? I was doing it because this relaxes you, Saul. Mm -hmm. But Saul. Oh, hold on, sis. We, okay. Oh, Lord, help us out. There's something about that little part she don't like. <laughs> it relaxes you. But it relaxes you better before the messy women. <laughs> this is why in the church we don't have women song leaders. No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please. I'm going to get a text tonight on that one. Oh, listen, brother. Uh, yeah. <laughs> go, go to be, finish reading, sis. Thank you. 
David, David was playing the harp as he usually did. Yes, ma'am. But Saul had a spear in his hand. Uh-huh. He threw the spear thinking, I'll pin David to the wall. Huh. Huh. But Who is David now? What role is he playing now? Target. He's a target of some crazy mad person who's jealous. Go ahead, sis. But David escaped him twice. Mm -hmm. The Lord was with David, but had left Saul. Mm -hmm. So Saul was afraid of David. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You think I made all this up? At first, she was your best friend. At first, he was your best friend. Now you can't stand him. At first, they were special to you. Now you hate him. You hate them. Now you become the target, David. And sometimes the target is unaware of what is happening to them. All of a sudden, the person don't act the same anymore. And you say, Lord, somebody time this class. <laughs> oh, we're going we to get him out at 8 o'clock. I promise you that. I promise you that. He's going to be out here at 8 o'clock. I feel like the target. I really do. I really do. I really do. Don't throw nothing at me, sister. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Sometimes they used to be, you used to speak to them. Now you're acting funny. And then when they say, is something, did I do something wrong? What do you say? No, no, you, 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 you good. You good. We're good. Well, are we still going to go? No, 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 I'm sick. No, no. But it's not until next week. Y'all be sick, I'm sure. <laughs> Sometimes the target is undeserving. Oh, the target is undeserving of someone's jealousy and becomes the victim of somebody's insecurity. Saul was insecure. Ever since that song, that situation, Do you, uh, like I was saying, what y'all are, okay, the men were singing a song. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you're looking on, listening online, it's nothing like being in person, I promise you. You have no idea. Sometimes he or she has to endure the actions of an out-of-control out of brother and sister. See, it's one thing when it happens on my workplace, in my neighborhood, in my sorority, in my, uh, in my fraternity, but it's something else when it happens in the church. Because we're supposed to be better than this. And at least one or two of us have been one of these three things. We've been at times the misunderstood, a jealous person. Amen. Okay, let me, let me qualify that. Before you were a member of the church, <laughs> you've been an accomplice. Huh? You drove them. You know where you were driving them to. And you on, you on the court to the witness stand. I, I, I didn't know where we were going. I mean, they had a knife in their hand, but I didn't know they were going you know, to put all the tires on flat. I mean, I saw them kneeling by the car. And then some of us have been the target. Because folks have said, I'm insecure. And I'm going to take it out on the person. And I'm going to make the person suffer. But you know what's missing in all of this? And we're getting ready to conclude. Is the pointer. Who's the pointer? Who's the pointer? Who's that person? That pointer. P-O-I-N-T-E-R. 
pointer. It's that person who points out that you're too jealous, that you're this, that you shouldn't do this. Brother, sister, don't act like this. Brother and sister, you're wrong. Brother and sister, calm down. Brother and sister, don't do that to that person. That is not what Christians do. What is that person? who points it out and says, it is wrong. Now, we'll talk about it, but do we say, brother, you are wrong for being jealous of that brother or that sister in the church. Sister, you are wrong for being jealous of that other sister. She did nothing to you. Whatever happened to the pointers? Mom, it's wrong for you to compare one child against the other child. That's wrong. Final comments. Any final comments? Did we mess that lesson up? Does it make any sense to you? I didn't just want to walk through jealousy. Because sometimes we just say jealous, jealous, jealous. I want to walk us through it. And, and, and a sister gave me some really good advice. She said, brother, she said, sometimes you can extend your lesson another week. She, oh, okay. I was like, what is that? Because sometimes we rush. I, I don't want to rush through a lesson. If it takes us two weeks to get through a lesson, we're going to take two weeks. Because some of us, one of us, two of us, three of us, are suffering with one of these three things. And we've been a target, we've been the accomplice, and we've been a misunderstood. So what we have to do is say, you know what? I don't want to be a Saul. And, and when I said earlier to you, and we're wrapping it up, everybody who's jealous ain't losers. Saul wasn't a loser. Saul was an attractive person. You know you're attractive when the Bible points out he's handsome. But Saul had some insecurities, and he had some challenges, and all the women did was pull that out of him. Okay. All right, next week we'll have a totally different lesson. Uh, I know where I want to go, but I'm going to keep it in my mind. So uh, I think we have all the comments. So prayer requests, prayer requests, prayer requests, prayer requests. If you can stand and, and let us know so they can give you the mic, we sure would appreciate it. All right. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Um, I'm requesting prayers at this time. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise. rise Come among us. Them. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise. rise among the praises us. of let our King. Let the praises of our King let it rise. rise among us. Let it rise. Sing. Praises of, the our praises of our King, let it rise, rise among now. let it rise, yeah, sing it oh, 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 let it rise, oh, 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 let it rise, oh, 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 let it rise, yeah, let the Spirit of the Lord say, let the Spirit of the Lord, let it rise, rise come on now, let, let the Spirit of the Lord, let it rise, let the praises of, of our King let it rise, rise come on now. Let it rise. Hey, so we sing. Oh, 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 let it rise. Yeah, let the joy of the Lord sing. Come on now, let it rise. Let the joy come on now, let it rise. Let the praises of, of our King, let it rise, rise among come on let now, rise. we've got to let it rise, so we sing, oh, 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 let it rise, mm. so we sing, oh, 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 let it rise, yeah, let it rise, so we sing, Sing now, yeah. We 
Come on now, 